check to is the clinical applications and SWR is used for various neurovascular and neurodegenerative diseases such as traumatic brain injury, hemorrhage, stroke, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, multiple sclerosis, brain tumor and palsy. So here you can see the diffuse external injury which is a type of brain trauma and here in picture A in T2 rated images although this trauma is visualized but it's not detailed enough and at the susceptibility rated image at the level of uh, Santum Senior Valley we can see the boundaries of the trauma but it's not enough for us because at global levels of the brain this trauma can be observed in a better way yet SWI is still advantageous and on the T2 rated image since this trauma has other effects at the different sides of the brain as shown with the arrows uh, in pictures C and D here is shown is the one trauma effect and here this three different traumas are detected. SWI is particularly sensitive to the presence of very small hemorrhages because susceptible weighted image can detect the iron deposition in the hemorrhages and it can visualize uh, where the hemorrhage occurs. So in this picture, computed tomography scan CT fails to detect an hemorrhage. Here, the CT scan detects only one hemorrhage but on the other hand, the SWI image detects two different hemorrhages. Our next photograph series is about the stroke. Here you can see an acute stroke due to an early onset of aphasia and the right paresthesia. As you can see, there is no abnormality in picture A and in picture B. The picture C also seems quite normal, but when we look at the susceptibility weighted image, we can see this little lesion with the white arrow. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy tends to manifest in elderly patients and is a major contributor to the process of cognitive decline. It can play a role in the pathogenesis of dementia and also in Alzheimer's disease. So in this figure we are expected to see multiple microbleeds in CAA. But the picture A, T1 weighted image and the picture B, T2 weighted image do not reveal significant abnormality. And also picture C, MR angiography, MRA, shows normal brain vascular structure. But here in SWI, we can see this hemorrhage in the left area. You can also see this little dot as a microbleed and it is all over the distributed. So multiple sclerosis which is called MS, is a relatively common acquired chronic demyelinating disease involving the central nervous and it affects the brain and the spinal cord. As you can see here is the special case of MS. So in T2 weighted image and also T1 weighted image, also the original magnitude image, we can see this MS case. But here due to the iron decomposition, we can see a, a, a ring-like structure around some MS lesion. And iron appears in a ring structure with a smaller amount of iron scattered inside the lesion. So it is darker and scattered. When it comes to tumors, uh, MR stethoscopy, diffusion imaging, perfusion studies have also made significant contributions in this respect. And regarding the diagnosis of brain tumors, SWI is equivalent to T1 contrast enhanced image. This figure shows an example of left temporal glioblastoma. In all the photographs, the boundaries of the tumor is visible, but SWI gives them detailed information on the internal architecture of this tumor. For example, you can see the details here and here. So, Calcification is a very important indicator in the diagnosis and the differential diagnosis of brain tumors because in the MR images, brain tumor can be observed either due to the hemorrhage or either due to the calcification. So it depends on the susceptibility difference of this tissue. Although hemorrhage can be observed by the iron, iron deposition, which is a paramagnetic material, and the calcification is observed with the calcium phosphate, which is a diamagnetic material. Both will cause local magnetic field changes and that results in phase changes as well. 
So how how can we differentiate these images? So here is the blue eye phase image comes to our help. As you can see, in CT scan and the SWI Mexico scan, tumor is visible, but we don't know still what its content is. So here in the phase image, the veins along the lateral ventricle and sulci appear dark. And this dark image means it is calcification rather than hemorrhage. So our new topic is the benefits of the SWI. It improves the detection of the hemorrhage, microbleeding, hemorrhagic transformation, like stroke. And it detects the occult vascular disease. It diagnoses of cerebral venous thrombosis, intra-arterial clot detection. SWI also identifies of iron and other mineral deposition, like calcium phosphate. And it is also helpful in MR diagnosis of neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer or MS. And it also detects the tumor characterization. Along with the benefits, there are also some artifacts of susceptible related imaging, such as Magnetic susceptibility artifact. So this artifact is caused by the distortion in the MR image, especially skin while imaging metallic orthopedic hardware or dental work. As you can see in the picture, it is the backbone of the skull. Here is the dental work distorts the image. It gives the wrong presentation of the surrounding anatomy. Here. This artifact can be minimized by using a very short echo time provided T1 method or photon density weighted contrast, but this artifact cannot be completely avoided. So another artifact is the off resonance artifact. This artifact arises during the construction of the 3D phase mask regions with the severe field inhomogeneity due to off resonance effect. In order to reduce this artifact, an approach is presented to map local field variants by using 3D SWI data without, without phase unwrap. And that method is quite effective. As you can see here is the conventional SWI. And this is after applying the local gradient fields. And the image is getting better when the, when the image is processed with a Hemming filter. So here are the references for my presentation and thank you for your listening.